So this lesson is going to be looking at nucleophilic substitution. Um, nucleophilic substitution is one of the three mechanisms that is specified within the AQA um, AS chemistry um, unit two in particular. Um, and this one, the nucleophilic substitution, is going to be found within the haloalkane section. Um, so before we actually start looking at what the mechanism actually is and where the marks are going to be in an exam, I'm going to break the words down here. So the term nucleophile to start with. So the term nucleophile we can break down into nucleo and file of course. Um, actually looking at what these terms are, so nucleo really looks quite similar to the term nucleus. Uh, the best thing to remember there really is that a nucleus is positive for the sake of this sort of this example um, and that's obviously due to the protons and neutrons present, the neutrons having no charge. The term file is used widely and, and tends to kind of involve liking. When we put this together we could say well, it's something that likes nucleuses um, but actually we're looking at it in terms of something that likes positivity um, and in this case it will be relative positivity rather than actual charges as such. The term substitution, well really that just means swap, just as it sort of does in everyday life. There's no difference there. Okay, taking this on, um, we'll actually look at within the AS unit what you need to sort of apply this term nucleophilic substitution to. Now, as I said before, it's within the section of unit 2 um, headed as haloalkanes. So we've already looked at how we can make haloalkanes. So using a simple example, for this example we'll use bromoethane. Okay, so here we have our bromoethane molecule. Now within this we have a very kind of very standard molecule, we have carbons and hydrogens and the only real difference here is obviously the bromine. And this is very very important because it's the bromine within the molecule that allows for what we class as nucleophilic attack to take place. And the reason is that if we examine the carbon bromine bond a little more closely, we find an element here, bromine, that is very much more electronegative than carbon. And that means that if this here is our covalent bond, which is a shared pair of electrons, that actually, to be maybe more drastic than is, than is needed, the bonds or the electrons within this bond would be found to be closer to the bromine than to the carbon. And what this does is it gives us an area here of relative negativity compared to an area of now relative positivity on the carbon. So we have delta positive region and a delta negative region. Note that these are relative charge. The term delta implying here that it's kind of a difference of, of charge between them rather than actual positive and actual negative. Now, as I've already stated, the nucleophile is something that likes these regions of positivity. And so this here is an area that it likes and this is where the attack is going to take place. Now to initially use a, a generic nucleophile, and you might wish to draw this so as I'm doing this or pause this and then and then copy this down in, in its general terms. So if we use the term NU to define a generic nucleophile, obviously this isn't a real element, it's just a general point. Um, the attack occurs like this and what we find is that these lone pairs present on our nucleophile move and attack the carbon. So this is a point really here that all nucleophiles must have. Uh, they have a lone pair of electrons. And actually, the definition of a nucleophile is an electron pair donor. And that is sometimes asked in exams. They will expect you to just be able to sort of repeat that just straight onto the paper. So we have a lone pair of electrons that attacks here. And this arrow, this double-headed arrow, and you may have come across single-headed arrows in electron configurations. The double-headed arrow is signifying the movement of a pair of electrons, in this case from the nucleophile toward the carbon here. And this really is essentially a dative covalent bonding taking place, a coordinate bond. Almost at the same time here we find that another movement of electrons takes place and that is the movement of electrons from the carbon-bromine bond onto the bromine. Now this is our first step, really, of the nucleophilic substitution. And actually, for two of our nucleophiles, which I'll tell you in a second, this is actually the entire mechanism done. And this would lead us always to this point here where we have um, a new molecule formed, where the nucleophile is now attached. And exactly as the name suggested, the substitution, the nucleophile has swapped itself with the halogen present, whether that be chlorine, bromine, fluorine, doesn't matter, it swaps itself and is now on the new molecule. And in this case our bromine, or our bromide, is sent off and that would obviously exist 
um, within the solution. Now if we were to just look at where the marks lie at this point, we have one mark here and we have one mark here. Now what's very very important is that when we draw arrows we draw them from and to the correct points. Now in this case my arrow comes from the lone pair on the nucleophile and it goes to the carbon, not over here, not over here, over to this carbon, specifically the one that is attached to the halogen. That arrow should have some sort of curve, we call these curly arrows. Um, the other one, the other mark here is from is an arrow that comes from the carbon bromine bond. Make sure that is very, very clear and it goes on to the halogen, obviously in this case, the bromine. And that's very, very important that it looks pretty much exactly like that and there is no ambiguity with what you've drawn at all. If we now go across and we'll actually look at this for some real examples. Okay, the three nucleophiles that you're expected to know within, within this unit two, within the A specification, are the hydroxide ion, Again, lone pair of electrons, the cyanide ion, and slightly different to the other two, and also different in the way that it actually carries out its nucleophilic substitution reaction, the ammonia molecule, no, no charge. The first two are quite straightforward in that they occur in, in an identical way, and that is exactly as in the example shown above. So what might be good for you now is to actually draw out how you think both the hydroxide nucleophile and the cyanide um, ion nucleophile, how they would attack a molecule of bromoethane um, and draw the products too. So I want to pause and have a go at drawing that now. Okay, so what you should find is that if we're using the hydroxide ion as our first example here, we would find that the hydroxide ion, the lone pair again, moving on to here, bonds moving from, or the electron, sorry, moving from the carbon bromine bond onto the bromine, in this case forming as the following molecule. So we have hydrogens attached, always make sure that hydrogens are attached. I should add these really. Um, don't be sloppy. Now this molecule here, OH group present, we have an alcohol. And this, due to the two carbons here, so meth, eth, anol, ethanol. The next one drawn, and I will just simplify this one slightly rather than draw the whole thing, but it's exactly the same molecule as before. Cyanide ion attacks across, exactly the same mechanism, this time forming us a nitrile. So just add these hydrogens on. Now what's interesting about the nitrile is that it actually adds a carbon into the into the longest chain. So we now have meth eth prop and this is named as the alkane, ultimately there, with nitrile on the end. So if we were to have one less carbon here, we would find we have ethane nitrile. One more would be butane nitrile. Um, it's also, should really state here, this here is a triple bonded situation. We have a carbon triple bonded to a nitrogen, and then obviously the single bond to the following carbon, which is then this ethyl group here. Again, looking at the marks we've actually got present, in both these cases, one mark from the lone pair to the carbon, second mark from the bond to the halogen. Lone pair, carbon, bond, halogen. Two marks in both these cases, fairly straightforward. Okay, now it's time to have a look at the ammonia molecule. Okay, so ammonia acting as a nucleophile. If we use the exact same starting point as before, we'll use bromoethane. Okay, so we have a molecule of bromoethane. Now exactly the same as before again, we have our ammonia here, lone pair of electrons attacking the carbon. And then we have exactly as before, the electrons coming from the carbon halogen bond, in this case the carbon bromine bond, onto the bromine. Now with ammonia there is an extra step before we actually get to the product, and that is as follows. We have the exact same starting point, no change here, and with the rest we have the, in this case, the NH3 bonded on. Now, there are two more marks here. The first is for having a positive charge on the nitrogen. The reason this occurs is that in this point here where 
both electrons from the carbon bromine bond are moved onto the bromine. We find that the carbon loses the electron that it gave to the bond. So when the ammonia comes along and it actually brings in one of these electrons, we find that in doing so, the, the nitrogen portion here, where the lone pair is, is actually found, that has actually donated one of its electrons to the carbon, which in turn then ultimately uses it to simplify things, uses it within the bond. This means the nitrogen has become deficient by one electron, and therefore we have the positive charge on this nitrogen, which is an incredibly important detail. The other point here is that we have this portion here where the bonds, or the electrons, sorry, between the nitrogen and the hydrogen move and fall into the nitrogen here. And actually what we also would find, although not required in the exam, is that this occurs um, ultimately giving us the NH4 plus the ammonium ion here. And that's where that hydrogen actually goes, just really more of interest. Now, in terms of products here, what we have is exactly the same as before, carbon, carbon, but the end of the molecule has this NH2 group, and this dictates that we have an amine. Um, amines are named with this part see here, the amine, and then what's attached to it. So in this case, we have an ethyl group. So we would call this ethyl amine. Okay, what I'm going to suggest now is that we have a go at one example from an exam paper. Okay, so this is an example from an exam paper. Now this carries five marks. If we look at the initial question, we have four marks for the mechanism and we have one mark for this thing here which is naming the mechanism. Now in the case of what we've done, we've only looked at the nucleophilic substitution, so we know that it first of all must be a nucleophilic substitution reaction occurring. But that carries one mark on its own, so don't miss that within an exam. The mechanism, have a go at drawing the mechanism now. Okay, so just to check what you've got mechanism wise, if we draw out the molecule in its entirety, so the CH3, CH2, CH2, Br, one bromopropane over here. We know our nucleophile is the ammonia molecule, lone pair of electrons, curly arrow coming in to the carbon, curly arrow moving from the carbon bromine bond onto the bromine. Intermediate stage, three carbons as before. Remember the nitrogen now with the three hydrogens. Just fill all these hydrogens bane of my life. And on here, remember, we have to have that charge due to the nitrogen now being deficient by one electron. And the final point, that movement there, electrons between the nitrogen and hydrogen moving on to the nitrogen. Now, you could include that step, but it doesn't carry any marks, so really there's no need for it. In terms of the actual marking points here, we would get one mark for naming the, the actual mechanism that's occurring we get one mark for drawing that initial arrow from the nucleophile, from the lone pairs onto the carbon, the delta positive carbon. We get one mark here for the movement of the electrons from the bond onto the halogen. We get a structure mark for the actual positive nitrogen and we get a mark for the movement of the electrons from the nitrogen hydrogen bond onto the nitrogen. Okay, hopefully that's been of some help.